Welcome to the special edition of Sporting Journal Radio and Slash Taz and TV. I'm Brett Amundsen. A lot of people have been asking about tourism to Canada this year. They extended the border closure for non-essential travel for an extra 30 days on April 20th. So May 20th, May 19th uh, is when that border closure could change. How is this affecting tourism to places like Saskatchewan? Well, I wanted to get my friends uh, Trevor Montgomery and Barry Prawl from Taz and Lake Lodge on the show to uh, discuss it. They were recently interviewed. Trevor is recently interviewed by a local news station in Saskatchewan to talk about it. We're flying only, so everything comes in on airplanes, and uh, it's a huge cost to that. Trevor Montgomery co-owns Tazan Lake Lodge in northwestern Saskatchewan. So it really makes you look at it and go, hmm, is it worthwhile to open for half the time frame and spend the same dollars? Unless there is some form of a bailout or some kind of help to the industry, it's going to see catastrophic losses of outfitters over the next short period of time. All right, now we're going to talk about how the COVID-19 situation has affected people outside of our region here in the Twin Cities when it comes to tourism or people from our area traveling to another part of the world, for that matter, another country, uh, in this case, Saskatchewan. We're going to talk to Trevor Montgomery and Barry Prawl from Taz and Lake Lodge, also Trails and Outfitters, too, and A to Z Training and Safety Company there, Trevor. Did I get that? A to Z Training? Did I get that right? Safety and training. I always, close I always mix those two up. But uh, thanks for coming on uh, the show. How are you guys doing up there in Saskatchewan? Good. Yeah, doing good here. Just it's a hurry up and wait game, hey? Well, that's what I wanted to talk about because obviously the situation is hitting hitting businesses pretty hard. It's hitting the tourism industry very, very hard. And uh, I've talked to a number of people here. Uh, obviously, with what I do, I deal with a lot of people who are in the tourism industry, guides and outfitters, lodges, resorts, people that are encouraging other people to travel somewhere else to enjoy that part of the, of the world. And obviously, I love coming up to Taz and Lake Lodge, and we uh, were poised for a great year up there with a lot of people. And right now, we're I'm, I'm getting, I know you guys are getting the questions too. I'm getting the questions every day. What's going on? Uh, are we going to be open? Are we going to have a season up there? So I just want to have you guys on so we can just kind of discuss where we're at. Uh, where are we at right now, guys, with Taz and Lake Lodge? You want to go first, Bear? <laughs> <laughs> I can't go sure, with me with, uh, with Trails End and Taz, and we don't really know. Like, until they actually open the border, like, for Trails End, I'm exclusive U.S. clientele, so until they open the border, I basically have no business, and that's the bottom line. Just wait and see, and haven't really heard anything if it's going to open on the 19th or if it's going to be another month. So it's like Trevor said, it's a wait and see situation. And so just to clarify for people that are wondering, on uh, April 20th, uh, the U.S., Mexico, and Canada have each agreed to extend restrictions on non-essential travel across their shared borders for 30 additional days. As President Trump stated last week, border control, travel restrictions, and other limitations remain critical to slowing the spread and allowing the phased opening of the country. And non-essential travel includes travel that is considered tourism or recreational in nature, which is obviously uh, what we deal with in our businesses. So uh, another 30 days. Were you guys surprised at that, or did you expect that? Uh, I expected it, I guess. So you are you saying, Brad, it's another 30 days as of what date? April 20th. So that's that. Oh. That's what I read. Uh, what I just yeah. read. So yeah, exactly. And it's so basically right now it's closed till May 20th. Right. And uh, then they're going to, of course, revisit it at that time. Uh, you know, we have high hopes, of course, that things will move around. I'm sure a lot of that's going to depend on, you know, the numbers of what's going on more than anything, you know. Yeah. It, it, and that's just basically all you can do right now is just mm -hmm. wait for someone to say, OK, now you're allowed to do this. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Right. And I'm sure every outfitter is in the same boat right now. You know, every single one of us out here or uh, anybody that deals with clients coming across the border, uh, you know, whether right now, whether that's provincially or federally, you know. Yeah. Can you guys, uh, how is it, how is it in Canada right now? You're in Saskatchewan. Can you go to Alberta or Manitoba? Are you guys, 
can you travel across uh, other provinces? No. no. Provinces are shut down, so each provincial border is shut down, as well as uh, once you get north of PA, getting into the Northern Administration District, or NAD line, they call it, those are shut down, too, as well, uh, so that you can't even head north. Really? Uh, so outfitters couldn't even go up and prep their camp right now because, of course, uh, they want to keep the spread and avoid the spread. There's a lot of Northern First Nations communities up there, and they want to avoid the spread into those areas. And I suppose they don't really have much infrastructure when it comes to, you know, hospitals and, and health care no. uh, uh, services up there. Yeah, that's true. They have a health clinic and they have, you know, uh, some have doctors and nurses, some have nurses uh, and that. But most of them would be, you know, uh, either ambulanced or air ambulanced out to local centers, uh, you know, farther south communities, larger communities, basically. Here in Minnesota, uh, resorts and hotels or hotels, resorts, they are uh, starting to open back up a little bit or they, they've been given some guidelines or they're, they're asked to do rigorous cleaning and things like that. When you guys open back up, are there, have they given you, given you a set of guidelines as far as how, you can, how, how to maintain the camp? Well, basically what's happened is they've released the COVID-19 guidelines for how to deal with things for cleanliness. And, you know, there is uh, guidelines for campgrounds, hotels, places like that. We'd fall underneath of those guidelines, and those are what we'll follow and ensure that, you know, things are done in the proper manner with the proper disinfectants and uh, you know, regular disinfecting, still social distancing and, and whatever else uh, that is required at that time as they move forward to that opening. And as far as reopening there's everybody's talking about phases is there a certain phase that you guys have to wait for uh to open up up there well for the season to open number one <laughs> efficient season but also too as well uh the border you know technically right now uh as of may 19th outfitters could open uh but when your majority of your clientele base is from across the line the border kind of rules everything right now yeah. So technically you could open up at that time, but if you don't have people, uh, you don't, if you don't have your clientele. So uh, a lot of it just uh, is determined by that border opening. Uh, what, has the Canadian government offered any assistance for your type of business? Uh, not really for outfitters at this current time. They've done a number of different offerings to different industries and different businesses. Uh, I believe that it's coming. I think one of the reasons why it probably hasn't happened is because most outfitters haven't opened yet, you know, for the main seasons. And I believe as pressure gets put on, as those uh, come down the line, then typically an offering comes about. Now you guys are part of uh, uh, the Saskatchewan Commission on Professional Outfitters. What have they been doing on your behalf? They've been advocating quite hard for outfitters to both federal and provincial governments to try and, you know, do anything they can to help out, to get answers, uh, you know, whether that be some form of, uh, uh, of financial support or even, uh, you know, limiting lease rates and things like that for this year for outfitters, you know, just to try and alleviate or take off some of the pressure. What are you hearing from other outfitters? Uh, everybody's pretty much in the same boat. There's a lot of skepticism. People are concerned, very concerned, because some some outfitters have decided that they're not opening this year. You know, uh, some outfitters uh, during the winter season haul a lot of gear in or fly in, do a fuel haul or things like that where they got to put out big, big money. Some of them, it's a quarter million dollars of money worth of, that they got to put out to wait for the season. So some of the ones that I've talked to have said that, uh, you know, they made the choice back in uh you know in march and said no we're not going to put all that money out uh, i know of a few large outfitters that have said no nope, we're not going to operate 2020 hmm. you know uh other ones are just standing by kind of like we are uh hoping and praying more than anything that things are going to move forward open up and uh people will be able to resume relatively normal life gosh i hope so so, so what if somebody has a trip booked for this summer and the border doesn't open back up and they're not able to come up for uh, for a trip to Taz and Lake Lodge this summer? Yeah. Uh, well, of course, that's worst case scenario. 
uh, in the event that it does happen, you know, in discussions from, I guess, what Barry and I have agreed on is we're going to, it will roll over to, over till next year. And then, it, you know, we'll, we'll honor that next year um, and be able to move forward with it. You know, anything you want to put in there, Barry? No, that's right. That's what I say is fair. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's that's a fair way to do it. Pretty common. Uh, I don't want to say it's pretty common because this is not a common situation. <laughs> but uh, but in our you know in our waterfowl guy business, where if we've had some sort of reason to push, whether it be uh, weather related, generally it's weather related. Something happens mm-hmm. and we say, hey guys, it's we we're not going to hunt. We always push them to the next year generally is how we do that so i think that mm-hmm. is a fairly common thing to do uh businesses like yours aren't the only ones that rely on this tourism uh there's so many other businesses that rely on people coming to your area isn't there guys oh it's amazing actually i just looked at a statistic for saskatchewan here last week i think 13.6 million people visit Saskatchewan every year and it uh, it generates something like 2.4 billion dollars wow. you know so it's humongous like it's a uh, unbelievable uh, the you know the hit we're going to take it doesn't open up soon well it's like you just said there too Brett you know it's not just outfitters it's all the services and suppliers uh, everybody else from hotels to restaurants to the tackle shop to you know anybody who's a fisherman or a hunter you ever go into a hunter fishing store without spending at least a hundred bucks <laughs> no, it just doesn't happen right you know right to the to the drive through restaurants to the mom and pops and and my suggestion too is anybody that does once the season opens up you know when you're coming through and, and doing that so stop and support the little guys you know the walmarts the mcdonald's all them those guys are okay they got the bailout. They got the huge employees. It's a little mom and pop tackle shops on the corner and gas stations on the corner and those kind of things that uh, they're going to need a lot of support after this. And it's important to, you know, spread that money around into the, the people that we can help. Well, and I, I understand that I'm kind of in the minority in the fact that I usually drive up as far <clears> as I can when I go up there in the summertime. Most people fly. But all the little towns that I stop at on the way through – I'm bringing money into that, those communities all along the way. And I, I, a lot of times I'm stopping at McDonald's or a Walmart here and there, but at the same time, I'm also going into the, the little locally owned mom and pop gas stations and I'm buying food while I'm filling up the car and uh, I'm spending a lot of money along the way. So there, there's so much money that gets generated in tourism. I know our friends at, at uh, Tourism Saskatchewan, I'm, I'm sure are just biting their fingernails right now, wondering what the heck we're going to be able to do yeah. this summer. It's uh, it, it's, it's tough all over the place. And, um, you know, uh, gosh, and I'm going to be mad just, just regardless of the business aspect of all of this, I'm going to be personally <laughs> mad if I can't come up to the Island this summer, guys, it's, uh, you know, it's become one of my favorite things to do all yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, Barry and I will surely send you a few videos and pictures. If you can't make <laughs> this year. Oh, thanks guys. <laughs> right here. Gosh. Anything for you, buddy. <laughs> I really, really appreciate that. Well, uh, you know, we haven't done much talking about uh, the lodge and what you guys do up there just in general. Uh, t- tell our viewers here, our listeners uh, about Taz and Lake Lodge and what, what we do up there, guys. Sure. Well, we're, a, you know, a flying fishing outfitter in northwestern Saskatchewan. Uh, we hunt for trophy pike and trophy lake trout. It's a world-class fishery. Um, and, yeah, we're just trying to do the best we can. We've been constantly upgrading the camp. Barry and I took her over a couple of years ago now and just giving her heck. Did uh, a bunch of major upgrades uh, over the last couple of years, as well as, you know, we have eight brand-new 25-horse four-strokes sitting 20 miles away from Taz and waiting to get flown in as soon as that darn airplane runs and all this stuff opens up and, you know, just, uh, just been doing lots of upgrades and trying to constantly move her forward more than anything else. Got a great guide pool lined up for this year. Uh, we're definitely looking forward to it, you know? Well, it's, it's not just a wondering if there's going to be a season, but say there is a season and all of a sudden you're Mm -hmm. up, you're running, you've got, uh, you know, you got people there that are, you know, preparing meals that are guiding clients but here's a whole stretch of time where we could have been booking trips for this place and taking deposits that hasn't yeah. happened i mean now you gotta you gotta consider I, I, in that interview that you did trevor you gotta consider running a full camp at the full expense of running a full camp 
yet maybe not getting the full clientele because of, of, of getting backed up with this whole COVID-19 yeah. situation. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how things play out. And, uh, you know, well, we can only continue to, I guess, engage people, put out promotional stuff uh, and just continue to move forward. I'm sure it's going to take a little while for consumer confidence to come back a little bit, too, as well. Right. You know, uh, and depending on which businesses, the stock market's taken a huge hit. You know, there's a lot of factors involved. Uh, so once again, we're doing all we can and uh, just trying to make sure that we're letting people know what we're doing and continuing along and. You know, uh, we definitely appreciate any of the support that anybody's given us so far, as well as, you know, uh, have patience and wait for the border to open to our clients. That's all we can tell you right now, because we're sitting in the same boat you are. It's a wait and see game. What's life like up there right now as far as uh, are, are kids distance learning? Are they are, I'm assuming they're not in school, obviously. Are they are they still having school at home? Kind of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I have two kids, uh, eight and ten, and they're both at home. Uh, and my wife has turned into no longer being my office manager. Now she's, uh, you know, homeschooling and house making. Yeah. You know, it's amazing that she can turn like that and do that kind of thing. But that's awesome. Yeah, my wife Lana being a teacher, it's like you say, every day they go on and try to get the kids all on. Uh, you know, they do these uh, the new whatever it is, Zoom and a bunch of stuff like that to try to get everybody involved and on and dropping off papers every day to work at home. And Yeah, some kids are doing it, like my older daughter, who's in grade 11. They uh, they kind of basically just told them that's it till the end of the year with the older kids, but the younger ones are still trying to keep them learning. Hmm. And what about going to going to the store, are all the stores open, restaurants, uh, fast food places, or is everybody wearing masks? What What's open and, and how are people patronizing those businesses? Basically in Prince Albert uh, and Saskatoon, some of the larger centers that I've been at, uh, bigger essential businesses are open. Uh, restaurants are not open except for drive-through in the main parts. Anybody that can do takeout or drive-through or a curb pickup, that's really being pushed heavily up in this area. You know, uh, a number of the other businesses say like going into a bank, there is somebody standing at the door. They're only allowing two to four people into the building at a time. You know, uh, same with Costco. Uh, you know, they got a line of people out front and they're just letting so many in at a time just to maintain that social distancing. They're really encouraging social distancing. As a whole, say 20% of the people you see out there are wearing masks, you know, uh, it, it, when we get the direction we did from our feds to say, well, you know, if you have a mask, wear it. If you don't, that's okay too. Nobody really knows what the hell they should do. <laughs> I, you know, I think that sums up this whole situation is nobody yeah. has known what to do. Uh, or nobody wants to stick their neck out uh, to actually say, do this. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I, I just don't think anybody knows what to do. And that's why it's been such a wait and see for everybody right now. But hopefully, hopefully, uh, we're, we're on the way back to things. Hopefully I know, uh, some of the States here are starting to slowly reopen things, uh, as we, as we move forward here. So hopefully we'll get some semblance of normality. I, I don't know how close to normal it'll be, but hopefully we'll have a, a season up at Tazlin Lake Lodge and we'll have a good summer up there. And we can look back on this with a, a cold beverage on the deck at the lodge there and say, we made it through and we, uh, we had a solid year. That's what I'm hoping for. I agree, but I want it to be on the, I want it to be on the water and not on the deck. <laughs> so, well, I'm okay with that. <laughs> I know you are. That sounds good. All right, Trevor Montgomery, Barry Prawl, uh, good luck with everything. Stay uh, safe and, and healthy up there, and thanks for the time here on the show. Yeah, yeah. you as well. Thanks, Brent. Yeah, we appreciate it. Take care. Now is the time to start thinking about chasing big walleyes on Devil's Lake. Get on the fish at Hay Bale Heights Campground and Resort. Hay Bale Heights makes it easy for you to make memories on legendary Devil's Lake with guided fishing and lodging packages. Or bring your own boat and rent one of their cabins on East Bay. Hay Bale Heights offers a private marina, fish cleaning station, and the opportunity to relax and enjoy your bucket list trip to Devil's Lake, North Dakota. To book your trip, visit haybaleheights.com. That's haybaleheights.com. Hey, anglers, looking for a destination where walleyes, fresh air, and 
fish fries are a way of life, look no further than the famous waters of Lake of the Woods. From Bedette and the Rainy River to the main lake up to the Northwest Angle. Here you'll enjoy the best walleye catch rate in the state. Maybe you'll pursue world-class sturgeon, pike, or muskies. Plus you'll find lots of full-service resorts offering charter boats, delicious meals, and lots of Minnesota nice. Come experience the walleye capital of the world. Come experience Lake of the Woods. Catch the details at lakeofthewoodsmn.com. If Trophy Lake Trout and Monster Northern Pike are on your list this summer, book a trip to Tazan Lake Lodge in northwestern Saskatchewan. Everything from numbers to big fish. See pictures, videos, and more at tazanlake.com. This is quite the fishery. Our five-star chef will feed you well after a day of chasing giants on Tazan Lake. Dream come true. Get rates, dates, and more of what you can expect. It could be the best fish you've ever had in your life. At tazanlake.com. That's tazanlake.com. Tazan Lake Lodge is a proud partner of Tourism Saskatchewan. Coming up on Prairie Sportsman, we go shooting without shells with wildlife photographer Steve Olenschlager, who also raises upland birds like prairie chickens and ruffed grouse. All on the next Prairie Sportsman. Watch Shooting Without Shells on Pioneer PBS May 3rd, Sunday night at 7.30, WDSC in Duluth May 9th, TPT Live May 16th, the Minnesota Channel May 21st, on Lakeland PBS June 6th, and on KSMQ June 25th. 